but to do to try that whole workout so uh, the content for the session would be that we'll first talk about the behavior of a magnet in a uniform field and we'll set up some very important concepts which we will be needing for the remaining day remaining session so behavior of a magnet in a uniform field then we'll see the behavior of a magnet in a non uniform field that's where we'll see that the deflection occurs and you can separate out spin up and spin down states and then of course because the silver atom uh, it behaves like a tiny magnet and uh, uh, say due to its electron spin that's why we are talking about these things then in the second phase we'll talk about observations in sga sga is for stern gerlach apparatus so we'll see what are the classical expectations which mean in this world a usual world what should it be what do you expect that it should be but then we'll talk about what is actually seen and that's a quantum phenomena that we'll see again we'll have a short quiz just to ensure that you have understood and then we'll use that electron spin to form bits and then those bits into qubits okay and we'll close the session by learning how to write those superposition states the mathematical expression for those superposition states so i start with the main content dr chaudhary sorry to interrupt yes, uh, sorry yes. to interrupt dr chaudhary could you make it in the full screen mode uh, because uh, Uh, can you please allow me to do it this way because this is my tried and tested way i can write on it i can share it on it and you won't see anything bigger on that also uh, okay, i can assure fine. you i can assure you okay, this thing okay, that i have tried okay, it out fine. this is the most effective way and you will see that i'll if i need to write i'll be very easily be able to write and explain something okay uh, thank uh, you okay uh, so quantum computing works on the principle of quantum phenomena a classical computer the usual one that we all use represents information as bits and those bits can have a value of 0 or 1 it's not both at the same time it is either 0 or 1 so one bit can store either 0 or 1 the quantum computer uses qubits 0 1 also combinations of 0 and 1 now by combination i mean that you can have things like that it is 50% 0 50% 1 or even more weird 10% 0 90% 1 things like that now if this sounds weird to you i can assure you you have started getting quantum mechanics but if this does not sounds weird to you then i'll borrow from what my learned colleagues have been sharing for the last 3 days that example of that schrodinger's cat the cat if you say it is 10% alive and 90% dead now usually what we think is that the cat is about to die in 90% it has died and now bus 10% more and then so we think in terms of a counter that some kind of counter is moving and when it goes 100 the cat will be fully dead oh no it's not so it is the cat is dead and alive at the same time now that is really very odd way of thinking see you always say the cat is either dead or alive and the probability uh, that you to say depending on what is happening all around it no the cat is dead and alive both at the same time and if you measure it if you see it then the possibility of finding it dead or alive is given by all those coefficients now if it sounds weird if you feel oh what kind of odd statements you are making then i can assure you you are on the right track that's what quantum mechanics is all about so what is available to us whether in nature or created by man which we can use as a qubit there are few candidates one you listened to jyoti ma'am yesterday and uh, today what we are going to talk about is that how can that use of electron spin as a qubit so let's start with a bar magnet that we all have seen uh, this is a usual kind of bar magnet you see in all schools most of the families they in homes also you see it now the bar magnet has two poles now two poles the word is dipole one of them is a north pole other is the south pole now the measure of it that is it a stronger magnet or is it a weaker magnet the measure of it is called dipole moment 
so today like i won't like to use the word bar magnet bar magnet all the time because you know there are things that they are not bar magnets but then they behave like bar magnets so because a general word is a dipole i'll keep using the word dipole and by dipole i mean the dipole moment the measure of it so if i say strong dipole i mean to say larger value of dipole moment this dipole has a direction and i have shown it here with this green arrow south to north so it has a direction so magnitude is there direction is there two poles are there now first feature that we need to learn very carefully uh, is that when you place this dipole in a uniform field uniform field means the magnitude at every place is same and the direction is same uniform field same magnitude same direction and we represent it by parallel lines so this is what a uniform field looks like that i have drawn when you place a dipole in this uniform field the dipole will turn around i'll show you an activity soon it will turn around and ultimately it will get aligned now what do we mean by align the dipole moment i said it has a direction what was the direction south to north that dipole moment will be in the same direction as that of external field so i'll magnify this one that's why i wanted to remain in this mode this i can do easily now if you see this picture there is a these 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 blue lines are showing a uniform magnetic field equispace parallel lines and in it we have placed a dipole now just a way to understand please don't get so bothered about why how can you write this and that just a way to see this uh, 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 say this not say let's talk about this north pole this north will push it up or say this south will pull it this side so there is a force on this north pole upwards likewise you can say there is a force on this south pole hey. downward uh. and these two forces are equal and opposite so what it will do is these two forces acting on this bar magnet they will turn it align it in such a way that the dipole is aligned to the uh, is aligned to the external field so once again and the pr practical application that you would have seen is that you might have seen a magnetic compass the magnetic compass has a magnetic needle and if you allow it to rotate it will align itself with the magnetic field of the earth so this is what happens so if you have a bar magnet which has a dipole moment so if you have a dipole and you place it in a uniform field it will align itself such that the dipole moment and the external field they are in the same direction now few terms ah then uh, the, i said equal and opposite there is no net force on it there is only torque which will align it once again how does it align the dipole moment is in the direction of the field if you turn it either this way or that way it will go back to this thing so this state is of the least energy it's something like in a bowl if you put a marble it tries to go to the lowest point now if due to inertia if it crosses over it starts rising the other side it will again try to come to the lowest point of the bowl so this is this orientation is the lowest point of the energy and it tries to come in this thing that it gets aligned with it few terms that we need to understand right now so that later on when we come to that silver atom in that sga we will be familiar with all those terms one is spin up see this is a spin up condition now let's see the word there is no spin here you can see there is a bar magnet there is an external field there is no spin here but then the magnet that we are going to study today that magnetic property in silver atom is due to the spin of the electron and there when i say spin up it will mean that the equivalent dipole will behave like this so right from the beginning i am starting to use this word spin up though spin there is nothing like spin right now but later on the that tiny magnet that we will have in that that silver atom that will behave that will behave like a magnet due to the spin of the electron and at that time spin up means this is what i mean by spin up so when i say spin up there it means the equivalent magnet will align in an external field like this the second word that we need to understand is up up now this is something which 
say it initially used to bother me. See here the field is up. Here the external field, the magnetic field is up. And so this dipole aligns itself up. Now customary, they say the, the convention is the up direction is written as plus Z axis. In this SG experiment, the up direction, you take it as a plus Z, positive Z direction. Now, one thing you can ask is, what direction is positive Z? Now, I can say, see the simple thing is, whichever direction you have the external field, that direction is plus Z. Whichever direction you have the external field, that direction is plus Z. And you draw it like this. So that's why you say this is say plus Z upward direction. And because the dipole aligns itself along the field, so this position is called spin up. Otherwise, there is nothing like up or down, and there is nothing like left, right? There is nothing like even Z axis, I don't think. Whichever direction, whichever direction you put the magnetic field, and I'll show it to you by changing the magnetic field. Whichever direction you have the external field, that direction is Z, and that direction is up. And the dipole aligns in that direction, this is spin up. Now, one thing that I want you to understand, this spin up, this orientation, spin up is of least energy. If you turn it by 180 degree, if you turn it by 180 degree, it can have the net torque zero if you turn it by 180 degree, but then that's an unstable equilibrium. That's a higher energy state. That higher energy state is called one. This state up is called zero because usually it used to bother me. Why do not, why they don't they call up spin up as one and spin down should be zero. So I hope I'm able to you know communicate to you why spin up is taken as zero. Spin up means aligned with the external field, and this is the condition of least potential energy. This is the least energy. When you turn it by 180 degree, the dipole has. Uh, you have done work. And those who have studied the dipole, at least those who are on, in class 12, they would know that 2 MB is the work done, that you return, take, do it to rotate it by 180 degree, but that's a higher energy state. So you need to do work to turn it. So that state is a higher energy state. So when you bring it down, spin down, that's your one, one state one, and this is your zero. Now let's move ahead, if you have understood this, and let me summarize this thing because this is important you know, and we will need it in the remaining part of the discussion. Dipole aligned to the external field, whatever is the direction of external magnetic field, take that direction as plus Z, whatever. And when you say the dipole is aligned with the external field, that dipole, you will say it is in a spin up state, which means it is along the external field. It has the least potential energy, and this is what we say is state zero. Okay, now, if the field is not uniform, what happens then in that condition? If the field is non-uniform, then uh, let me go back to this diagram that I had and which I magnified. This force upward, this force downward was canceling out each other. There was no net force. There was only torque, which was aligning it, but now, because the field here is more and field here is less, the force on this north is more and the force on the south pole is less. So there is a net force and this will create a deflection. Now, why do we need that deflection? If you want to separate out spin up and spin down separate beams, if you want to have a pure state or spin up or spin down, you need to deflect it left or right, left or right like that. So. The cause of deflection is this non-uniform field, which causes different forces on this North Pole and on the South Pole. Now, let me see if you can make a guess. Now, just, just to facilitate that, uh, that which side it will move, you can think in this term that, see, this is the North Pole, this side. So the attraction between these two is more. So this North, this South, it will be more. And the repulsion between this South and this South will be less. So the attraction is more repulsion is less. So what will happen? This dipole, which side will it go? I'll give you a chance. You need not answer right now, I'll, 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 but then there will be a quiz on it. So better you start understanding and you know get on the same wavelength as me. Predict, say it. First thing, tell me one thing. I'll magnify it for you. I can make it bigger and bigger for you. First question, 
which of these dipoles is spin up? Remember what, what we said about spin up. Make a guess. Which of these two dipoles? Remember, see the field direction. Field direction. This is north, this is south. The field is down. It is non uniform. That's another thing. The field is down. Which of these two dipoles is spin up? So if you remember what was a spin up, a spin up was aligning itself with the, the dipole moment is aligning itself with the external field. Now check the direction of dipole, south to north, south to north, south to north, and the field is in this direction. So which of these two is spin up? And now guess, now guess which of these two will deflect up and which of these two will deflect down? Make a guess. And remember, we have a quiz. Remember that. Okay, if you have made a guess, now I'll show you. Now, what if, if I place a dipole, which is, say, listen, let me, let me, let me do this, this explanation, let me do it, so that all, say, anyone who has not understood then can also understand. This is spin up, and north is applying more force on this south, so there will be more attraction, so this will go up. So spin up will go up. And this one, the north-north repulsion will be more than the attraction between north and south. This will be repelled. So it will be deflected down, something like this. So if I, am, if I draw the path after this, this is the velocity. After this, it is supposed to go like this. And this one is supposed to go like this. And you can separate it out into spin up and spin down, those kind of things. You can separate it out. Let's see. Now, if I place a dipole like this, say if I place a dipole like this, north and south like this. Now the attraction and repulsion on both of them, and, and I, I'll place it here. Why do I place it in that corner? I place it somewhere here. Now the attraction and repulsion on both of them will be same, and this one should go straight. And depending on that whether you are making it like this or you are putting it at an angle like this, depending on this, you will have all sorts of deflections, like this, like this, like this, like this, all sorts of deflections. I have one, uh, say, activity to show you uh, that this I'll, I'll send you the link. And I'll rather I'll first what I'll do is I'll post you the link of it. Um, this is the Atlas. And I'll post this link into the chat box so that you can all click on it and play along with me while while i play, play and why should i have i have the i'm going to be the only one who is having fun so come to this uh, on this page uh, you will see this is the quantum atlas and you can choose a particle right now choose a magnet classical magnet with this these all these things we'll talk about later you can uh, set how many times you want to do this experiment so by default the number is one and uh, so now you run the experiment. So this bar magnet, the dipole will come north, 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 repelling. Okay, run it again, or let me increase the number of experiments and you make a guess quickly. So next one, ah, north, it should be repelled. Eh? Now see again, next one, north, so it should be repelled. Ah, and more, more repelled. Now this is south here, attract. Ah. This one, very little attraction, yeah. So keep guessing like this, repulsion, very large repulsion. So, and here you will see all sorts of places where this dipole is hitting, okay? So I'm going back to that presentation. So you have this kind of thing there. So we are using only the first part. I have sent you the link. The remaining that spin up, spin down, and that all those superposition state that we will come to later. So this is what you expect, okay? No, 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 time for the first quiz, time for the first quiz. I'll post this link into the chat box. There are six questions just to make sure that so far I have been able to explain to you well. Otherwise, based on your feedback, remember your quiz response is also a feedback. Based on the feedback, I'll modify what I'm sharing with you. So in the chat, I'm posting the link for a small quiz. Kindly click on this link, try that, and I'll show you the results of this quiz here itself.
So far, I haven't got any response, but that I understand. There are six questions. When the response comes, you will be able to see it here. <laughs> take your time, take your time. You have a minute or two, don't worry. We can extend the time. Okay, we have got a result. Say so once someone has submitted and they have got five out of six points, two have submitted. Now we can look at different questions that how many are correct and how many are wrong. Five responses. Okay. Oh, 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 a bar magnet plays in a uniform field. Okay. Seven out of eight are correct. So most of the people have understood it right. Ten out of 11 have got it right. Okay. Here also majority have got it right. Bar magnet plays at random orientation in a uniform field. Very right. But then this I'll show you later on. Otherwise, you'll copy the answers. 15 people, 16 people. How many are there? 98 in the meeting. Minus one, me. I expect more than 50 responses. Let it come. 22. 23, 4. Yes. 28, 29. You know, I'm also like any other teacher. Initially, I'll say, take your time, take your time. But then when the half of the class has submitted, we say, you know, half of the class has submitted. I don't worry, don't worry. Straightforward questions. So 37. Let's have few more. 38. Now, if anyone else wants 41. So around 50, I'll start showing and seeing the answers. And if most of you are answering it correctly, then I'll quickly summarize and I'll move on to the next part. So 44. 46. 47. Okay, so half of the class has responded and the other half can keep submitting it, but then let's see the answers. Most of the people, 88% have answered the first question correct. Second one, surprisingly, only nearly half of the people have got it right. A bar magnet plays at random orientation in a uniform field. Uniform field, that was the key word. Uniform field. It experiences only net talk. There is no net force. But when you place it in a non-uniform field, yes, yeah, most of you are right. It experiences both net force and net torque. It will try to align, but then it will experience net force or uh, net force and net torque both. And in the setup shown, the dipole moves left to right, so depending on that figure, but 70% of it got it right. There were two things that you had to answer. Is it a spin up or spin down? And will it be deflected up or deflected down? 70% of you have been able to get it right. But the second one, you could not get it right. The last one, oh, this is surprising. The last one was a straight one. It will neither be deflected up nor be deflected down. Okay, okay. So let me, so uh, you, those who want to submit, they can keep submitting this answer, but then I'll go back to this thing and I'll just quickly summarize, you know, what we have done so far. That one thing, a dipole placed in a uniform field aligns itself along the field, and this is the state of least potential energy, and we call it state zero. Okay, if it is in the non-uniform field, then if you have not been able to make out, like, will it be deflected up or down? But one thing you understand, it will be deflected. There will be a net force because the field is non-uniform. The force on these two poles will also be non-uniform. Now, say unequal and that will create a deflection. That deflection will be either up or down. So you don't need to go into too much of details of this, but then it will be deflected. So whether up and down, are you able to make it out or not? That's a difference. So let me move on to the second part now. The second part, the beginning point is 
that a current carrying loop, current carrying coil, current carrying coil and a bar magnet, they are identical in their behavior. A bar magnet has a dipole moment in this direction, but then here, it is here. So I've shown it on the side so that it's visible more. And a current carrying loop also has a dipole and you can find its direction by putting your finger around it like curl. So the, the direction of current, you put your fingers curl and the direction, the thumb will tell you the direction of the dipole moment. So what I'll do is, and so what should happen? A current carrying coil placed in a magnetic field should align itself with the magnetic field. Now, I was initially thinking of sharing a video, but then I thought, what's the point of sharing a video if I can do this activity straight away? So what I'll do is I'll change my camera and I'll, I'll change this camera to my mobile camera and I'll select that camera. So you can highlight my video or what I'll do is I'll stop sharing this so that you can highlight, you can say spotlight on the video. Now I'll take my mobile and I'll show it to you from all directions. Can you see right now this coil, uh, current carrying coil and this magnet, they are not in the same plane. You can see I have placed it on my table in a way that they are not in the same plane. And uh, so I had to turn it a little bit little so that, you know, uh, because this magnet right now is getting aligned with the earth's magnetic field. And that plane doesn't seem to match with the current carrying coil. I'll place it on a stand. And now if I pass current through the coil, pass through current, you see it tries to align. You see that? I like when it oscillates like this because the tendency to be in the lowest state is so strong that if it crosses it, it will again come back to that same position. You see that oscillating and if I keep holding it for a while, it will stop also. But you know, I don't like when things stop. So what I do is I remove it and I again start creating this thing. I like it when it is oscillating because you can see that stability of the structure. By the way, I said current carrying coil plays in a magnetic field will align itself. You know? But what I'm showing you is the current carrying loop, a current carrying loop and a magnet is placed in that current carrying loop. By the way, you know, this is part of, let me change the camera back. This is a part of all that, you know, nature loves symmetry. So you have a magnetic field in that you place a current carrying coil or you have a current carrying coil and you place a bar magnet in it. Both are identical. They, they are nature loves symmetry. So this one, what I did was a current carrying loop and in the magnetic field of that current carrying loop, I place a magnet. But then they align. That's what I wanted to show you. Uh, now, the, the, the silver atom, when heated and vaporized, the, it behaves like a tiny magnet. Now, I'll briefly, I'll talk about how it, what is it. The silver atom has 47 electron, electrons. The 47th electron in the 5s orbital has a net spin angular momentum. The spin of this unpaired electron causes the net dipole moment. Now, this in itself, this thing is a complete, what you say, a chapter or it is a complete book. So what I'm doing is, because it's not related to today's talk, what I'm doing is I'm borrowing the result of it. And the result is a silver atom when it is heated, vaporized, that silver atom is a tiny magnet. And the cause of it is that Unpaired electron, the spin of that unpaired electron is the cause of it. But the net outcome is that the silver atom is a tiny magnet. And so it will have a dipole moment. It's a dipole. When you heat it, those uh, from the oven furnace and pass it through a non-uniform field, you see this is the same structure that we have drawn so far, north, up, south, down. You have a non-uniform field uh, and you pass it, pass through this non-uniform field. Then classically, the expectation is because those silver atoms, that tiny magnet will be randomly oriented. And so depending on whether it is up or down or in between somewhere, you expect this, this distribution, uniform distribution, the way we saw in that, uh, that uh, quantum atlas. You expect this. But what is actually observed is that there are only two spots. It means 
that silver atom, the tiny magnet associated with that silver atom is not randomly oriented. It has only two orientations, either that spin up or spin down. Why? That's what nature made it to be. That's what people obviously say, different kind of thing. Electron has zero as and one as a spin down. Which one? Do we call as zero? Which one we call as one? I have a for school students. This is little. In that state one and state zero, they are orthogonal. You know, there's a doubling angle kind of thing, but then. Uh, Dr. Tyagi, uh, your voice is not coming mm -hmm. or breaking. Can you check it at your end? Uh, there are messages in the chat that the voice is breaking and also I'm also observing that. So can you just check your uh, connections at your end? Thank you. We do that. Uh, does it any way get better? Is the sound better now? Yeah, it is better now. It is much okay. better. And, and if it happens, then immediately do let me know. Uh, okay. Uh, so, 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 if the last part was, uh, but then this part I have already discussed earlier, that how do you decide which one is, uh, say, state zero, which one is state one, that I have already discussed. Uh, time for a short, short, short quiz. Very short one. This one will be very short one. And if you have been listening to me or uh, seeing it, you will be able to answer it straight away. I am sending the link for this quiz. Kindly, quickly go through it and then we'll create those superposition states. And I'm sure some of you would be seeing it for the first time. They will say how it, it, it is done. So I have posted the link for the quiz, second quiz of the day in the chat window. And uh, yeah, so, and I'll show you the list. By the way, in that earlier quiz, we got 80 responses. Good enough. Okay, by the time you are submitting answers to the second one, I can go through these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 65, yeah, yeah, this question, people seem that they are not, ah, yeah, 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 that's a little difficult to, Analyze in the beginning that will it deflect up or will it deflect down? Yeah, in the beginning, it's little and you know, a little looks like little confusing type. Okay, quiz two. Let me see how many have started responding. This is a short one. Sweet. Oh, already 34 responses. Wow. Means people found it easy. Must have been easy. Yeah, see. So once it crosses the 50, I'll show you the results. Uh, quick response, 40. Yeah, three questions are there only. Let me see if the third one is also right. 44, 45. So moment it becomes 50, I'll share the answer. 49 and 51. Okay. So two-thirds of the people in Eastern Galactic apparatus, the classical expectation is shown by uh, out of the two, four and five, it is at four one. Mm, continuous, continuous distribution. Yeah, 70% people in quantum. The quantum result is that there are only two states. And the spin up, okay, most of the people have understood this thing, that it has the lowest energy. This state is represented as zero. Okay, so most of you have got it right. Yeah, let's get back to uh, the creation of that state. Now, classical to quantum. Till that time, you have a two-state system represented by zero and one you are still computing classically. Means you can do research on faster ways to access your data, to write your data. You can research on better algorithms. You can, or you can think of parallel computing processing, but what you are doing is a classical computation. 
you are still using the definite classical state zero and one in quantum computing you not only have those one and zeros but you also there are infinite possible combinations of these one and zeros and how you do it using electron spin using sg stern galak apparatus is the topic of this discussion now for an object to be used as a qubit we said in the beginning we'll see what makes something a suitable candidate that it can be used as a qubit so for an object to be used as a qubit first thing it should have two definite classical states to fall to so and and second thing it should be possible to create a superposition of these two states now if it is not possible forget about it for example in a current flowing in a circuit current flows current doesn't flow so two state now someone can say why there can be three current flows current doesn't flow and current flows in the opposite direction yeah go ahead we have spin also three spins are possible and a plus one minus one zero so if you are able to develop technology for that it will be used if you can't develop technology for it then then it will be very good conceptually but then won't be used now examples of two states this you studied yesterday light and photon uh alwalia sir have raised raised hand and uh, i'll stop here to listen to sir sir yes sir actually in the third question uh, you said which one is uh, one or zero or you have to choose between these two don't you think that it is an arbitrary choice i yes. can yes but, but I yes. yes it it is arbitrary but then say out of the two what sounds more sensible is that the lower energy state you choose as zero and the higher energy state you have, but then it's equally see you could have called anything any of these as anything but certainly are certainly arbitrary but the score will give me but you have marked it as the other one zero yeah no but see convention means that if you no. say the rajiv let's decide that oh. this is x direction no, 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 no. now the, the, the truth is any direction could have been x but then if you say right direction we'll call it x then you know if you want to communicate better then better that i also start calling right direction as x so the right direction could have been z it could have been y mm. so should i move ahead sir Uh, yeah but this was one comment which i wanted to make thank you thank you sir thank you thank you okay uh, anyways for me it's a you know big privilege big honor that hello ali sir is listening to me thank you so much sir acha so the examples are two states yesterday you saw in this that how photon light you know polarization phase of it say partial reflection partial transmission you can have two states electrons we are doing it today spin alignment spin up spin down the coin normal coin it has two faces head and tail but then can we create superposition states of it so photons you saw yesterday beam splitter it created that superposition state today we we are seeing electrons that using stern galak apparatus that we can create superposition state coin you toss it till the time it is in air it's a combination linear combination say superposition state of head and tail moving ahead this is in the activity that we are going to do right now i'll share with you the link first i'll share with you the link so that you are able to play along with me so i'll share that link first so first what we'll do is we'll create these spin up spin down pure states and then we'll create the superposition of it so this is spins laboratory and what i'm going to do is i'll share with you this spins laboratory this one and i'll place it in the chat box so you click over it and you play along so this thing should be opened on your computers now keep listening to me what you can do is this thing will shoot all those electrons that you know bhatti wala furnace you know those single vaporized kind of thing now on this one if you click this is the default window so i'll start from it how to use it quick tutorial on it if you click on it click on it you can choose so what i'll do is this x is by default i'll choose a z one because that's what we were talking right from the beginning z z z direction so this is a z oriented uh, analyzer uh is something okay 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 just i thought that because one the ma'am has posted something in the chat in the window okay so this is a z analyzer that we were talking about and we were talking about that the dipole will be deflected either up or either down what you can do is from this extreme end up where is the extreme end you click and drag click and drag 
it will give you three options. What do you want to put it here? I am saying put a counter here. And then you click and drag and you put a counter here. So what I'm doing is I'm passing these uh, silver atoms into a Z analyzer and spin up and spin down, I'm counting. I'm counting how many are there. Now remember, probability doesn't give you exact half hour. It is nearly half hour. If you do it, some, if you do it for a very big number, then it is nearly half hour. So, all those. so if the numbers are not exactly matching, don't be too worried about it. That's not an error. That's what happens practically. Okay. And I start this. So you keep a count. Now, if something is 15 on 23, the numbers are, but then they are supposed to be nearly equal. So what it means is there is a nearly equal probability of finding these in spin up and spin down. Are you able to do this much of the activity? So what I'll do now is I'll see, I'll check first. I'll, I'll go, go to this one. Say pass the beam through a ZLN analyzer. It separates particle into spin up and spin down. Put counters to see nearly 50-50 distribution. We have done this part. Now I want to confirm. I want to verify. Is the spin up really spin up? So what we are doing is this is a diagram that I have copied uh -huh. from Feynman. Excuse Feynman me, sir. What is uh, a Z, Z analyzer? Z, Z analyzer. Okay, okay. Uh, the magnetic field that you are passing it through is along Z. And also you are able to count. So that is called Z analyzer. There is an option for magnet also. Good that in between you ask because this is a question which should be answered right, right now. Uh, so, Z, if you, so there is an option there. You can put a Z-oriented magnet. And there is a, you can put Z-oriented analyzer. The analyzer will also count. The magnet will only apply the magnetic field. The analyzer will apply the magnetic field and will also count. That's what it is calling a Z-analyzer. Okay. Now what you do is, this is a diagram from Feynman lectures. You put another one. So I'll go back to it. Put another Z. So to remove it, just drag it and throw it out. It will be removed. Drag it and throw it out of this screen. And from here again, click and drag. And when it says what you want to put up, you say put an analyzer. Change it to Z. And put counter in front of it. Counter. Put a counter. And I will put a counter here also so that you can see that these numbers together should be nearly equal to this number. Now, these spin-ups are going through, again going through. Say they were they pass through a Z-oriented field, again passing through a Z-oriented field. So spin-up, if they are really spin-up, there should be no effect. Let's start. Now, do you see these spin-up? Only spin-ups are getting counted now. There is no spin-down here. If you want, I can remove this and I can put, I can put a Z and I can put I can say change it to Z, clicking over it, and then count these, count these, and you will see in this one, you will see only, ah, ah, ah I should first reset it. Are they Patience. Ah, yeah, okay. Now you start again. Now you see the spin up goes and they remain spin up. The spin down, they remain spin down. Okay. So we have reached this point that we have, we are very sure we have been able to segregate spin ups and spin down, spin up separate, spin down separate. And this is what it looks like. I took a screenshot earlier and I have placed it in the, so that if someone wants to see it later, they can see it. Now we will create superposition. The super, oh, 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 I'm so sorry for this word. Superposition states. Now we'll create that superposition state. So what we do to create superposition state for electron, this spin up beam or the spin down, one of the beam obtained from that Z analyzer, pass it through an X aligned analyzer. So I'll go back to this, remove on a lower one I need not remove. This one, I'll remove these counters, drag outside and drop it there. And so you know, this one is giving purely spin up, you have verified it. Right? So now you take it, put an analyzer along X and count, and count. What do you expect? Reset, and now start it again. Now don't look at this one. This we use it only to verify that spin down was spin down. There should be nothing here. 
but what will happen here you see now spin up and spin down it's nearly half half distribution it has seen. so this one spin down remains spin down but this one spin ups have mixed between spin ups and spin downs i go back and i hope because i gave you the link i hope you are able to do it if there is anything that you are not able to say pull drag because these are those you know whenever you see something new you need little bit of hand holding so that I have done. So this is what we did. Um, this one, I want to do it because your homework is related to this. That See, uh, because someone asked it in between and I found it a relevant question, so I answered it there itself. What is this X analyzer doing? It is applying a field along X, say horizontal field, and then it is allowing you to count it also. Instead of that, apply a x directed horizontal say field and then analyze it then analyze it there should be no change x after x should have no change so you should get the same kind of result i have put the screenshot there so you can see that it works but then there is a purpose why i am putting this pure magnet there say so why is it that i am doing it here that i'll reveal to you when i give you the homework so we have been able to create a superposition state from pure spin-ups. We have been able to create a state where spin-ups and spin-downs, it's a combination of spin-up and spin-down. How do we write these states mathematically? How do we write it down? A quick note on this, and then we will close. Two states mathematically for a coin. Coin has head and tail. So if it is a fair coin, 50-50% chance, you write it like this, that the head state you write something here and some part of it is tail set. These numbers are chosen in such a way that if you square this number, square, what do you get? One by two, which is 0 0.5, 50%. When you square it, what do you get? One by two, 50. So that's how you write a 50%, 50%, say 50% head, 50% tail. This is how you write. Now, can you write a 30% head, 70% tail? Can you write that? You write it like this, square it. You get 3 by 10, which is 30%. Square it, you get 7 by 10, which is 70%. This is how you write the superposition states. Now, for an electron, can you have a combo of half spin up, half spin down? 50% spin up, 50% spin down? Yes. You write it like this. Square it, you get 0.5 spin up. Square it, you get 0.5 spin down. But how do we obtain it physically? You obtain it physically by passing a spin-up beam through an X-aligned SGA, Stern Galactic Apparatus. Now, can we have a 0.4 spin-up and 0.6 spin-down? Yes. But how do we obtain it physically? You don't put the analyzer at 90 degree. You put it at some angle. And that's where you can feel your homework is coming. <laughs> okay. So the summary. Sending a spin-up electron through a horizontal SGA puts the electron in a superposition state. Spin in the vertical direction can be represented as a superposition of spins in the horizontal direction and vice versa. These are the ways you write down. Some of it might appear to be little odd to some people, but then uh, you get a hang of it. If you write once or twice, you get a hang of it. But then I showed you number wise that yes, that something which was pure spin up has been broken into spin up and spin down. It has become a combination. The last quiz for the day, a quick one. I am putting the link in the chat box. Ah, someone has asked a good question. I'll take it up later. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Beam splitter, yes. Something similar to that, beam splitter. So a quiz has been shared to you. Try doing it, and then you have a homework. And then we can continue the discussion, because my time is nearly up now. And we go and we see the third quiz. Quiz three. Take your time, take your time, take your time. A minute or two extra won't hurt anybody. At least it won't hurt me. SGA, Stern Gerlach Apparatus. So far, every time I said SGI, I also said Stern Galak, and not experiment, apparatus. Uh, Raju, sir, you haven't shared the link of the quiz. Quiz? 
really yes yeah, sir yes sir you just share the link of this quiz sir quiz 3 haven't i shared yes i think i shared just a second just a second let me do it again if i haven't shared oh 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 oh, 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 oh. chat okay i'm sorry if some i messed it up like this okay so now there is a quiz for you one two three four four questions last quiz of the day no link sir we haven't received the link for the quiz why is it so oh acha okay 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 because somebody sent a message and it's going in the personal message i am so sorry i didn't see that somebody sent a message and it's going in that personal account of that person that personal chat of that person so i'm sorry now have you got the the, the link have you got the link now for the quiz oh yes we have got okay 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 thank you i thought you are angry and upset with me that you are not trans okay okay thank you yes now i have started getting responses mm -hmm. sorry i have killed your around 2 minutes i'm sorry for that 3 okay average has become better than 3 3.2 and 3.22 3.2 average is increasing getting better so those people who are taking time to respond they are answering ah uh, 3.31 and average score is getting better once it crosses 50 i'll show you the answers 41 people 43 45 46 49 and here are the answers okay most of the most of you got it right the beam of dipole is passed through z oriented analyzer the probability spin up half very right okay 71% people got this also right that through a z oriented analyzer the spin up particles are again passed through another z oriented analyzer the probability is 1 it is sure that you are here got a pure state and if the beam of dipole through a z oriented and then you pass it through another x oriented now again it becomes 50 50 and most of you have got it right and the last one most of you have got it right that the probability for the particle to be detected in state a which has the coefficient of 1 upon root 3 oh root just a second let me go to the question why do i get a fee? no 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 that's all right yeah i have put it 1 by 3 i thought because that i have written here root 1 by 3 the probability is a square of this number and so the answer is answer is 1 by 3 and most of you have got it right oh oh, oh, oh this is a tick mark it appeared like a under root and it confused me but 81% of the people have got it right so uh, back to the this is the homework last word from me one is that you put an x magnet first and then in seed of x which would have no effect you put a z i have shown you the screenshot you do it yourself and then in the whatsapp group we discuss it what is this happening i'll give you the hint yesterday when that um, um, uh, uh, that uh, uh, interferometer was being discussed max zender interferometer there was somewhere a beam was being split and somewhere there was being combined and in certain cases if you remember the probability of a counter was coming out to be one something similar i am giving you a hint but then first do it yourself enjoy this activity do it yourself and then we discuss it in the whatsapp group in the coming days once the activity this course is over and admins allow you to post freely we'll share we'll continue with it the another homework is 
if you really want to create a 3070 state, you know how to write it you know, under root of 0.3 state up plus under root of 0.7 state down, all those kind of things. At what angle do you place that analyzer? So those who are keen into doing something good mathematics, uh, it's my from my side, it's an offer. You try it out. These are my contacts numbers. Please don't ring me up. Send me a message. I will 100% I'll answer. But picking up a call, I work in a school. Picking up a call is nearly very difficult. We have to set up examples. And, and there is an email. Uh, it keeps getting flooded by emails. But then uh, the messages I'm very good at. If you send me a WhatsApp message, you will certainly get an answer. So you are certain. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you, IAPT. And thank you, President Saab. And uh, all the, the senior teachers and professors with whom Arvind Kurukarni Saab, I'm so thankful for this initiative. I have enjoyed preparing for this session. And I hope I have given you some value for this one hour that I have taken from you. Thank you. And back to the, um, um, the chairpersons. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Tyagi, for your wonderful talk, which was fully engaging. It was having all aspects of asking questions, reconsolidating, and also throwing the uh, uh, same material in a manner which can be easily understood. Otherwise, these topics are not very easy to understand. I would also like to say here that this throws light on a historical perspective which was done a century ago. This experiment played a very important role in playing for, uh, in establishing the spin of an electron. And that particular thing was theoretically also verified. And students can also read about a historical perspective of it. And they can also read after silver. It has been done with many other atoms. And in that, those results have been tried to explain theoretically also. Because Ollenberg tried to give explan explanation because why we are getting two. And in that, the theory has to be modified. And after that, uh, other than that, the consolidation of the four quantum numbers and the splitting of the atomic lines, all this has been, I think, uh, follow out of this. And your talk has been fantastic in making a connect between what was done 100 years ago and what we are going to see in the quantum technologies. So here we have got a few questions which were asked in between. There is a question by Senkit. He says that in simulation, dipoles are just deflecting towards on the one of the side on at, at the end but there are there was change in the evolution can you explain uh, can you explain this or i can read it from the uh, say that question has gone at the lost in the history i think just let me see what where is that question there is a, a comment by uh, Thomas. Can, Thomas. Uh, excuse me sir can you share the uh, screen or home task homework uh, can you share the screen Last screen, and to see, and to check. Sir, you have to unmute yourself. Okay. Yes. There is a, a question by Sankit. He says that in the simulation you shown, the dipoles are just deflecting toward one of the end, but there was no charge, no change in the orientation. Can you explain this, please? Oh, uh, see, these are learning tools. This is not the actual experiment being done. So when they are being deflected, because they will try to align also, there will be a little bit of that. So you can say it's a... Uh, lower version uh, simulation. So, but then what you have caught is right. Yeah, should happen. But then this is not an actual experiment. Understand that this is a simulation to make you understand or make you visualize. And that way, I think this is a good tool. Uh, there is a question by Dr. Ashwani. Sir, could you please tell us what is H and V in polarization? Yeah, that was explained by Jyoti ma'am yesterday. Why not put it in that group and ask her? She is an expert on it. And then there are, you know, if you put this question in the group, because I'll keep myself restricted to what we are learning today. And there are, you will see that there are very high dignitaries in this group that they are, who are with you. And they will answer you in a much better fashion. So uh, what I've said, there are better candidates to answer this question. And so please put it in that WhatsApp group. 
and horizontal so vertical can... and all those things and, and even vandana ma'am herself you know she can answer it very well yeah. i can i can just give a hint that you are going to use this tomorrow we will be talking about polarizations in the horizontal and the vertical and there will be many other ways of creating polarization so this answer uh, you should wait for tomorrow you will get an answer in very detail good. And yeah. so you have already answered this question by Rabindra Sina, what is Z analyzer? And you very beautifully also explained X analyzer also in analogy with that. So I think that will help them in doing their homework. And uh, there is a comment by MR that it is similar to beam splitter. You are perfectly all right. I answer, I'm answering on your behalf, Dr. Tyagi. Please and please also please. Dr. Paul is asking, can you please tell the full form of SDU? I think Dr. Paul, many have answered this uh, question query to you. And, and by now you know the answer. And other than that, do we have any other question which, I, which can be taken up? Sir, you have taken us so many questions in between that there is no scope for further questions, I think. And there is another simple, I think, last question. Can you differentiate between orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum? Uh, okay. Um, initially, people thought, it means everybody, scientists thought, that that orbital motion of that unpaired electron is causing the magnetic properties of silver atom. It was later on that this spin was postulated and it was found that it's not because of that orbital momentum, it's because of spin. Now, let me clarify one thing beforehand. Spin, if you see YouTube videos, spin is visualized as a ball as a, and sometimes like watermelons spinning on their axis. Uh, I, that's where I said I won't get into it because it's a complete, say not just a chapter, it's a complete book. Spin is a completely quantum phenomena. The word spin is common for you, but then what spin means in quantum? So I, what I did, I just took a summary out of that result. That, that silver atom has magnetic properties due to the spin. I did not get into it. Because getting into it, somebody you know, need to take up a whole session or say series of sessions to talk about that. So that's why I didn't get, didn't get into it. There is again a question on polarization which will be taken up tomorrow. I think it will be yes. clear by uh, by the lecture tomorrow when we have another wonderful speaker. And uh, there is another comment by Dr. Sahu that SDA was very interesting theoretically, but now to understand uh, quantum angle, I think uh, you have thrown light on that. And that is what uh, you have explained how to basically get superposition of different states by putting these analyzers in between and that superposition states is needed for the qubits which we are talking about and there are many ways yesterday we talked about the beam, beam splitter today we have talked about the electronic spin and in the forthcoming sessions we will also see that how these are actually done on quantum computers and what do we mean by cryptography also and uh, there is another uh, question by MR. How can probability different from 50% be obtained experimentally? I think... Uh, Dr. Yeah, Yagi see, for, ex for example, in case of a coin, it's called a loaded coin. So you, it favors head more than, uh, uh, than tail. That's how you obtain. In case of an analyzer, you don't put it at 90 degree angle. You put it at some angle. That's part of the homework. You will first try it out. So there is possibility that you can have a 30, 70 kind of, and you can have anything, 35, 65, anything. And I think your analogy with the biased coin we talked in one of the session is, is capable of doing that, altering the probability from 50-50 to any other. And it is yes. akin to that. And that is yes. something which will have uh, probability, one probability more than the other in the case of these states. There is another one. Discuss the theoretical predictions of the stern gilak experiment before it was conducted. Uh, I gave you both the pictures, the classical as well as uh, classical expectation and the quantum result. So what it should have been classically as per our usual say, thinking of the usual world, what it should have been, I gave you that also. And I explained that, that why it should be a continuous distribution. But then experimentally, when people did experiment and they got Nobel Prize for that, when they did it, they did not find that continuous distribution. They found that it is only two states. And so there are only two orientations possible, spin up and spin down, nothing in between is there. In fact, your quiz was, second quiz was based on that only. That yes, is yes, the classical yes, analog yes. of that with that. Mm -hmm. So I think your answer question is answered. There is another by Linden who says that if we could apply two orthogonal fields, what will happen to orientation of the dipoles passing through that combined field? Uh, classically, it will hit the center. Classically. 
but uh, quantum mechanically it will have a superposition state it will have a 50 percent chance of going up 50 percent going down it will not hit the center it will not hit the center at all that's what will happen if you put two uh, there is a question by yugen kulkarni the given angle is measured with what direction given uh, the given angle is measured with what direction uh, if i'm understanding the question right i'm not sure i'm understanding the question right See, I said any direction that you put up your magnetic field is the z-axis. So it's not like it's a preferred z or z is some sacrosanct number or something which is coming from, say, somewhere above. You decide it. Whatever field you put it up at this angle, this angle, that becomes it. But I, I don't think I'm understanding the question right. Though I have seen comments from Yugen Kulkarni, they are very intelligent comments. I'm seeing his comments for the last three days. But I'm sorry, Yugen. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure whether I'm understanding your question correctly. Hello, sir. Uh, can I ask? Yeah, please ah, do ask. Yeah, 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 please yeah go ahead. Because please. in this simulation, we have option to change the angle. So if we are changing the angle, uh, suppose uh, for a particular angle, we are getting uh, half and half, for example, 90 degrees. Then for different angle, we are getting 30, 70. So, okay, 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 okay. Now, now I get it. Now I get it. See, listen, if you put the second one, so it is with reference to the first one. So if the first analyzer was along Z and second one you are putting in X, that is 90 degree. But if you don't put it at 90 degree, you can see where are you measuring from? From the Z, from the first one. Now I get your question. Okay. 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 Thank you. Sir. And a similar question by Rohan. How to determine the angle? Is it something like this square root of 3 by 10? Zero state plus square root of seven by ten one state. This one though has gone over my head. I am not able to. I understand. think you answered this question that with respect to the previous one, you are measuring the angle, and depending ah. upon the angle of the subsequent analyzer, it will actually decide that which uh, which particular orientation it is going to be. Yeah, if I'm getting it right, yeah, that, that's what I'm also understanding from. Rohan, would you like to ask the question? Would you like, if you are available, you can ask, unmute yourself and ask. Because what you are writing, I'm seeing your comment here, uh, something like... Sure how to determine the angle? Should we use like the bracket notation or something yeah. like that? I'm not sure how to determine the angle here. Uh, did I answer your question when I was answering uh, Yugen's uh, question? No, sir. is it no? It's not that, you know. It's something different you are asking. Yes, sir. Like uh, I, if you can reformulate your question, because you know, ultimately, say, will you, unless I understand the question well. Uh, but then I'm sure in the coming, say, this is a ten-day workshop. Your question will certainly be answered. Just reframe it in a different way, because this way we are not able to understand what you want to ask. No, sir. For from for, for till now we have been I have been learning about only bracket notation to determine the state or uh, like that. But I'm not sure how we could bring an See, angle. This this bracket wala is only giving you the probability. Say for yes. example, right now what you have written square root of three by ten. It says that your state is zero has a probability of thirty percent. The root of three by ten, you square it. It is three by ten, which is thirty percent. So yes, th that's the only thing that you are getting from what you have written in the comment. There is nothing like angle here or say something. And I don't, I don't understand say what is angle in it what that you want to ask. But yes. in the expression that you have written, that's the information that you will get from this expression. And yes, so sir, someone, asking, someone else can answer your question better. Angle, like I'm, I'm not sure uh, how to get it. Like, yeah, that's where I'm saying. Can, if you can rephrase your question, then it can help us, you know, understand what you want to know. Are you talking about take your, take, your, of... take your time? Take your time. I think yeah. I, let's move on to because if yes. you are not able to yes. say, so I, I, I to ask that how mathematically I can write the state so that I can get at what angle the field is. Yes, sir, exactly like that. You how want, to it, you see, just a second. You, do you want me to tell you the answer for this homework? <laughs> <laughs> no, <it's... laughs> let's move ahead let's move ahead yes yes i think uh, we have reached the uh, okay. end of the questions okay thank you, uh, so, there much, is a thank comment. you so much hmm. there is a comment he wants to know the angle at which should be it should be projected so i think when rohan you will try this animation at home and you will be fiddling around with different angles and i think that is what uh, sir has given as a homework and you will get to know this 
and uh, tomorrow we can in case you need any help or anything is not clear it can be relooked at and i if i know you are a class 12 student yeah, am yes, i right yes ma'am yes ma'am so please don't get bothered by the direct notation and these ket and bra notation. You please uh, no, don't bother too much. In the your forthcoming years, you will be going to read this all in great detail. So at right now, I think uh, you should only concentrate on probabilities multiplied by the states. This is a way of writing. Uh, uh, it can be taken as a nomenclature. That is what you should understand at this stage. And afterwards, you can, I, I think, uh, take it and uh, you can read more and you can get you can get acquainted with all of these so i would now request professor aluwalia ji president iapt to say his remarks on today's lecture and then um, he then we can hand, hand it over to our uh, organizers rc22 thank you so much thank you uh, i think i'm enjoying this series it's a great effort and uh, uh, dr rajiv's uh, lecture today was excellent lecture what I was, you know, feeling was this, that people started, uh, you know, recalling such interesting experiments once again after 100 years when they thought of making quantum computers. That is one part. Otherwise, it would have remained as a history. But historically speaking, you know, there were uh, Bohar's uh, um, postulates were like a bombshell on people. He brought such a bombshell that there were tremors all around. That what is this happening? And everybody was looking forward to how to actually see the validity of his postulates. One was that people were able to explain hydrogen spectrum. Other was people were looking for direct confirmation of the quantization of angular momentum. And Stern garlic experiment actually provided us that opportunity. So these are very interesting classical experiments, very beautiful experiments, and which really made us move forward uh, in uh, thinking about foundations of quantum mechanics. And I think uh, Dr. Rajiv Tyagi brought out everything crystal clear. He really brought wonderful resources available on the internet to gel with this presentation. This was just great. I was also trying quizzes. Rajiv ji, thank you very much. You motivated me to try to play in my hands. When we get older, we have to forget that we have to do something. Second thing, you know, I would like to comment on Rohan's remark also. Uh, actually, when we are writing this uh, in KET notation, two states, to begin with, these are just symbols. But when we will move forward, say, in doing quantum computers, we will find that these are representations of the vector space in which we are going to operate. And Dirac gave us a, us a very, what you call, uh, precise uh, way of writing these things in a systematic fashion. Otherwise, you will see that this is corresponding to a column matrix so if you start going deeper into that, you will start seeing all these things happening. But at this stage, I think where we have targeted this uh, whole program, the success lies in the fact that we are able to engage plus two students also in this lecture. So Dr. Rajiv, congratulations for that. I think that is the success story of this whole program. And these are very new experiments which IEPT is doing actually. We had never tried such experiments in which we directly engage with the students in this particular fashion. And uh, there is another thing, those students who are sitting in this uh, uh, program, uh, I would like to really tell them, look, if you are thinking of going to engineering or going to science, and if you want to uh, toss a coin, I would tell you that you please have a loaded coin in the favor of science itself. That is what is needed. That is the need of the R. And you will find a lot of opportunities coming your way in uh, you know, pursuing something which is very, very exciting. So I think, uh, 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 yes, Vangraji, you have given the right comment. That's great. 
So these are very exciting things, very, very exciting things which are happening. And you are at the right time, dear students, particularly young school students, to really take a course which can make you enjoy science as well as do something good for the nation also because making a quantum computer, having workforce to run those kinds of things which are then possible, we require a quantum workforce. So you can think of this choice also when you think of going to choose a course. So thank you, Vandana ji. Thank you, Madhusudan ji. And Ma'am Sharmishta, she's a great learner. She's also here. Namaste, Ma'am. Your presence also makes us very happy. Uh, she is also uh, one of the great learners of uh, IEPT. She inspires us all. There are many other people also whom uh, uh, Professor Limayasar is there. You know that he is above 80s and he's still coming and sitting with young students to appreciate this program. And, uh, you know, there are many other people also who, who are whom I can see in this uh, in the program. Professor Balakrishnan was also there. I don't know where he is now, but he was there earlier in this program. So great going, wonderful. It makes me happy. It makes, uh, and it uh, really makes uh, IAPT a very vibrant platform. And thanks to IT tools also now that we are able to run all these shows in a very uh, systematic, wonderful manner. Uh, those who are responding and asking questions, congratulations, because asking questions is always good because uh, it also helps other people uh, understand what is going on in the class. So thank you. That is what I can say to all. Thank you so much, sir, for your mm -hmm. and, uh, inspiring words. And these are always provide a consolidated summary also of the session. And that is the most beautiful part of it. And uh, here I would like to thank all who are behind the scene. Like we have co-host some of the times, Vanil, Dr. Reshma, and many other, Dr. Madhusudan and his team. So we are thankful to all of them. And I hand over now the mic to uh, session two, Dr. Madhusudan for the closing. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Vandana ji, for hosting the session in a skillful manner. Uh, also, I would like to thank uh, Tyagi, sir, for his uh, skillful and engaging presentation on the topic uh, Stin Gerla experiment and spins. Uh, I also thank uh, the participants for their active role in asking questions and uh, give, uh, getting a lot of inputs from the speakers. Uh, with these few words, uh, I uh, declare. Uh, I think yes. that we forgot to mention Professor Kulkarni. He is actually uh, not able to come uh, because he is traveling. Yes. So the moment he will not be traveling, he will start coming again. But he has been telling me that he is, even when he is traveling, he will be li listening to these recorded lectures. Actually, so, he, he joined the session, sir. Joined the session. Uh, he, he, jo he, he joined the session, but... Uh, Maybe he's in transit. Uh, he's flying yes, to U.S. Yes. Right. But thank you, for Professor Kulkarni. Also, you know, is a spirit behind it. Soul of this whole program. Thank you. Uh, so we can now uh, sign off. Yes. Uh, with these few words, uh, I declare the session ends here. Uh, but I want to give certain instructions to the participants. Uh, WhatsApp link has been shared to all the registered mails uh, so that from tomorrow onwards, I will be sharing the uh, Zoom meeting link to the WhatsApp instead of sending mails. If anybody is having a problem in joining the WhatsApp group, uh, please chat with me. Okay. Please chat with me personally. So with these few words, uh, I declare the session ends here. Uh, meet you tomorrow with another informative, informative and interesting session. Thank you all uh, for your participation. Uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Good night to everyone.